levy older alien pieces of infrastructure were built with good intentions back in the 70s and earlier, but we know now in the years and decades since then that there's a lot of unintended consequences that neither prepared us for climate impacts or benefited the communities that surrounded the infrastructure. And acknowledging that is definitely the first step when we're talking about solutions. every single day drive over the Los Angeles River, many people don't know it's an actual river. It was seen as a river channel, you know, it was seen as a stormwater protection zone. You'd see these signs, like you're going over the LA River, and I remember them asking my parents, like, what do they mean? It's, it's just concrete down there. This is actually a natural flowing river, the LA River. So this is why the city of LA grew up where it grew up. Los Angeles grew tremendously quickly around the turn of the last century. By the 1930s, our underground aquifers were already getting polluted. The city just kept growing, but there was not enough water. We here in Southern California are face to face with a water problem. All Southern California was at one time a desert waste. But the desert is ever around us waiting on it to take back what was once its own. And it will take it back unless we bring in more water. So they need its water needs. Aqueducts were built to bring water from hundreds of miles away, from the Owens Valley, the Colorado River, Northern California. Los Angeles was built in an arid region and largely within the LA River floodplain. have water coming from the Santa Susanas and the San Gabriels and the Santa Monica Mountains. But we're kind of a bowl in LA and when it rains, it really can flood quickly. And that's what happened in the 1930s. There was a, a massive investment to channelize and to tame the LA River and to straighten it and to you know, put concrete everywhere and create a big massive blood control channel. It's a scar across this city. A scar that led to more of the rail yards and the industrial development and it led to the 710 freeway and the 110 and the 10 and the 405 and the 605. When it rains, about 85, 90% of that runoff goes into the LA River. Imagine a 51-mile corridor that outfalls into the Pacific Ocean down in Long Beach. One of the reasons we have to import so much of our water in LA County is because we, we get rid of our water so quickly. We don't use it to recharge our aquifers in an area that needs every drop of water we can get. Water infrastructure have been built in disproportionately low income communities, communities of color. They didn't have a say in where these facilities were placed. They've been fighting these battles alone for 10, 50, 100 years. Good afternoon, Buenas Tardes. This is Eastern Communities for Environmental Justice. It's really, really important that the LA County Board of Supervisors understand that they have the power to create structures that prioritize water 
ecological and community health and resilience to figure out that balance of a healthy river with healthy communities along the river. When you go to the river, you just feel, you feel its power. I think it's important to see the river because it's good for the environment and that also is good. The Clean Water Act is like any other law in that it will only be equitable if it's enforced equitably. We can't fulfill the promise of the Clean Water Act unless we center ourselves in equity and environmental justice. But we have to understand that when we're talking about uh, the Clean Water Act, and we're also talking about people's lives, we know that there's still work to do. Our most vulnerable communities often were not fully benefiting from the Clean Water Act the way that other communities have been able to. We have crumbling infrastructure in our country and in some communities non-existent infrastructure. 